Let's deep dive a little bit into the PE diet, you know, strategy and, you know, kind of how you explain it for people that maybe are less familiar with it. The protein and minerals on one side, the energy on the other side. Can you, can you kind of explain what that means and how you've been able to distinguish those two? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, there's really only three things you're getting from your diet. And so plants make food for every animal. And so plants make all the food for themselves. And then animals come along and eat the plants and that's how they get their food. So we're basically just eating plants or animals that eat plants, but it all comes from plants. And plants are really doing two things. They're chaining together carbons and hydrogens and making these high energy bonds uh, in molecules that are really just carbons and hydrogens and oxygen. And that's your carbohydrates and hydrocarbons, which are fats. And carbohydrates and hydrocarbons or fats are really just chains of high energy carbon, 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 hydrogen bonds. It's just pure energy. That's it. That's all that's there is energy. And you're eating carbs and fats to get this energy. And uh, humans can live on like super high carb, super low fat or super high fat, super low carb, very interchangeable. And if you interchange them as calorically, really nothing happened. The other thing plants are doing is sucking minerals up from the soil. There's a couple dozen minerals that are essential to life. And uh, uh, the most notable, which is nitrogen absorbed from soil in a mineral form, which is the basis of all your amino acids, which is the basis for all your proteins, which make up all the structural components of your body and most of the functional components of your body too, your hormones and your enzymes and all the things that do all the work. So basically your, your whole structure and function of your body is built around protein, which is this nitrogen um, containing amino acids that plants make using nitrogen from soil. And then carbs and fats, just purely for energy, which uh, plants get from carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and solar energy from the sun. And that's what photosynthesis is. You just use sun energy and carbon dioxide to chain together a bunch of carbons and hydrogens and oxygen. And so uh, if you really zoom out and look at it, then you're kind of eating to get the protein slash nitrogen slash minerals versus the carbon-based energy, which carbon fats are kind of uh, interchangeable. And so you can kind of look at your whole diet in a protein to energy lens, if you know what I mean, or uh, basically a nutrient like uh, protein and amino acids and uh, minerals versus uh, pure energy, which is just interchangeable hydrocarbons or carbohydrates. Um, I think the, the bodybuilding community has known this for a long time. They, you know, a lot of bodybuilders will tell you it just comes down to protein and calories. And I'm, I'm stealing heavily from that with the PE diet concept, which is really just looking at protein and calories essentially. And it's uh, kind of a useful metric. I mean, it's a, it's a useful way of just looking at your diet in general. And the book is really all about just breaking down different foods and how to look at foods through this lens of protein uh, and protein density versus non-protein energy density. Yeah, that's a great explanation. I'm hoping for the listener, this is fairly obvious at this point, but for somebody who's listening to this and wondering like, well, where did we go wrong in 2022 with our food landscape? Why do we see so many people unhealthy based on those principles? Where did we end up going wrong? Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So if you look at worldwide hunter gatherer macronutrient estimates, they're eating like 33% of calories from protein, because if you just go outside right now and kill any wild game type animal and eat the whole thing and then just find uh, whatever nuts and berries and fruits and vegetables you can find, uh, you're going to be eating about 30, you know, uh, 30 something percent of your calories from protein. It's really easy. So if you're a hunter gatherer, it's just brain dead simple. You just go out and, you know, kill animals, find uh, anything edible, plant foods, eat whatever you can. And boom, you're at this super high protein percent. Uh, awesome nutrient density, energy levels perfect. Um, if you're, you know, some sometimes the protein's so high that you're kind of starving for extra energy, and that's why you'll see hunter gatherers just like killing themselves to get like some honey uh, or some extra animal fat from like bone marrow or something. Or they're just basically going out of their way to find any concentrated <clears throat> source of energy because they're they're flying the calorie plane pretty low on non-protein energy. They've got enough protein, and they're looking for a little extra energy to add to it. You know, if you uh, gave them a couple donuts, they would be like ecstatic, right? But then what happened in the modern food environment <clears throat> is we figured out how to suck all the calories out of uh, certain types of food uh, as sugar and flour and oil, basically just pure refined carbs and fats. So we sucked all the sugar and flour and oil and, and non-protein calories out of these foods. 
And they have an amazing half-life of like forever, like a shelf life for a million years. And they're, um, you know, basically super cheap now. They last forever. Uh, the combination of high energy density carbon fats is super tasty and delicious and addictive. So you can uh, sell this stuff as junk food and it's just really tasty. Um, and now if you look around your food environment, all the foods in your environment are massively diluted uh, with these added carbs and added fats, you know, sugar, flour, oil, and it's diluted out all the protein. So now the protein percent of standard American diet is like 12.5%. And as the protein percent has gone down, obesity has just gone up and up and up. And uh, that now that's not just America, but the entire planet where, you know, about 91% of Americans are over fat and about 76% of the entire planet is over fat. And the biggest contributor is uh, nutrient dilution with basically carbs and fats, like empty calorie carbs and fats. And if you if you look at the past 60 years of the obesity epidemic and what people ate back then and what people eat now, the protein grams are, boom, exactly the same, like within like 10 grams of before the obesity epidemic and after. And that's because of protein leverage. Protein is very tightly regulated. You pretty much just eat until you get enough protein. So we're eating the exact same amount of protein that we were before. It's actually a little bit higher just because we all have larger bodies now with a higher protein requirement. But um, essentially the grams of protein before and after obesity epidemic, it's exactly the same, but carbs and fats each went up by about two or 300 calories a day. So like everybody's eating like an extra two, 300 calories of carbs a day, extra two or 300 calories of fat per day. And that's because every single food you eat has added carbs and fats dumped in there, protein dilution. And you're going to eat till you get the same amount of protein, but you're going to overeat carbs and fats to get there. And everyone just slowly gets fatter and fatter and fatter. And that's pretty much obesity in a nutshell. It's not only pushed forward by the protein dilution from carbs and fats, but also the fact that these high energy density carbs and fats together are super tasty because that's like ice cream and donuts and pizza and candy bars. And it's all um, uh, what I call the trifecta, which is uh, high carb, high fat, high energy density all combined. Your, uh, it really lights up your brain. Your, your brain loves it when you get anything really high carb, really high fat, really high carb and high fat, high energy density, because it's super rewarding because uh, basically if you're a hunter gatherer and you hunt and gather all day and you know you spend 10,000 calories and all you get is like some lettuce and some, you know, super lean gamey little squirrel or something. Yeah, you're, the, the return on your investment is so low. You got, you know, expended so many calories, you get so few calories, you're like, ah, oh, this sucks. But if you, uh, if it only takes you five minutes and you find like a donut, this is like the most amazing return on investment ever. And so from an evolutionary point of view where we, you know, we're facing starvation, this is like amazing. And this is just lights up your brain. And now that we've got like Uber Eats and I can just like press one button and boom, at my front door is like the tastiest, high energy density, high carb, high fat, addictive, hedonic, protein diluted combination of whatever I want. That's the most tasty thing ever. Uh, that was like the final nail in the coffin, you know, because it's all about ease and availability. <clears throat> and if it's easy and super available to get this stuff, you're just going to eat it. And boom, now everybody's over fat. Yeah, that is so difficult to reckon with when you think about that. You think about how we've evolved for so long, not a ton of energy, not a ton of calories fighting for our existence versus now it's like, we're, we don't even have to move. We can sit in a desk all day and get all of this. You're right. Like wonderful tasting food that you don't see in nature. You don't often see fats and carbohydrates combined into the super high, you know, density caloric you know energy bombs like you're talking about and it just does seem like a complete recipe for disaster not just on the nutrition but on the exercise as well yeah it's a complete complete disaster like nobody ever has to move at all and the food just shows up on your doorstep i mean i don't know about you but i can i can uber eat like donuts and ice cream and anything it's amazing like in it you know, I can prioritize that stuff and it's here in like 15 minutes. It's just absolutely ridiculous. I mean, it's, it's cool, but I mean, it's kind of bad. It's so easy now. It's just, um, yeah, I don't see how we're going to get out of this one.
Yeah, I agree with you. As, as much as I want to be optimistic about the future for you know society as a whole, that's a tough one. You're working against biology that's very hardwired and very strongly hardwired for so long. Um, yeah, that's very interesting. I do want to um, just make sure we hammer this home. You mentioned protein leverage, which I think is really important. So, so what we're basically saying with the protein leverage hypothesis is we will continue eating anything we can find until we hit a, you know that level of protein that we really need for repair and maintenance and whatever we need in our body. And that's why people can continue eating and eating and eating all the energy when they might be 200 pounds, 300 pounds, 400 pounds with all the energy they need to stay alive for a really, really long time. They're essentially, they have too much energy, but they're also starving for the protein and nutrients at the same time. Is that a, a, an okay way to say that? <laughs> That's exactly how to say it. Yeah. I mean, and protein leverage, it's, it's no longer just a hypothesis. It's a, it's basically a proven phenomenon in animal studies and also in human studies where uh, between a certain protein range, especially in humans around 10 to 30% protein, um, there's a huge linear uh, protein leverage from 10% of your calories of protein to 30% that uh, for every gram, I mean, for every calorie of protein you eat in that range, you're gonna eat about 10 calories less carbs and fats because you're just not as hungry. So um, taking people from 10% of their calories uh, in protein to 30%, you're going to get amazing results in terms of just automatically eating less. Um, it's extremely powerful. It's extremely linear. It does, it ten, protein leverage tends to fall apart um, at really, really low protein percents. If you try to eat under 5% protein, which is humans can barely live on that. You'll actually just kind of eat less and less because you're, you just give up. And that's what you're, uh, that's why your fruititarians and your um, raw vegans, most of your raw vegan or fruit-based foods are about 5% protein and they just get very, very thin. Um, and they, you know, lose a lot of lean mass and the cost of uh, adding mass to their body goes up exponentially because they just don't have enough protein to do it. So you see weird stuff down in the 5% range. Also north of 30% protein, it really starts plateauing off. Your return on investment gets lower and lower and lower. And once you about hit about 50% protein, more protein is not going to do anything. You're just going to be starving out of your mind. Uh, so, but like this, there's this 10 to 30%, very linear, very powerful 10 to one gear ratio where you crank up your protein percent in there and you're going to get instant results. And it really just comes down to choosing higher protein foods. And so if you look at um, these people who are, you know, have super obesity, they're eating the same amount of protein uh, for their lean mass that, that you or I are. Uh, but their protein percentage is way, way lower. So they can overeat a ton of calories to achieve the same protein outcome. Um, a part of that is uh, the overeating is passively driven by protein dilution and protein leverage. Uh, but some of it's hedonic as well. They're basically um, addicted to uh, the dopamine spikes um, in the brain from high energy density, high carb, high fat foods as well. It's, it's lightly addictive. It's uh, some people are more um, susceptible to this effect than others. It's almost like opioid addiction. You know, there are people who could probably use heroin once and not just be addicted to it the whole rest of their lives. But some people are just, it's like the, they'll never get over it. And the addictive food combinations are kind of the same way. It's variable how much it affects people. But a lot of the obesity epidemic is uh, this opioid, dopamine, hedonic, addictive side. Uh, but then a lot of it's just the dilution side where you're just trying to eat and your food's so diluted, you're still hungry and you have to eat more of it um, to not be hungry. You know, like, you know, uh, French fries or potatoes and oil, they're 6% protein and you have to eat so many French fries to not be hungry, to get enough protein, not be hungry, that you're just going to automatically way overeat calories. Um, but then you get those fries from McDonald's and sprinkle a little salt on there and they're like, so tasty. You actually want to eat that many. So it's this nice marriage of you have to, to get enough protein and then you kind of want to, cause they're awesome. And boom, everybody's just eating more calories exclusively from carbs and fats, not from protein.